Hello, legends, heroes, and poopy heads. Welcome to the Omni Flash channel, where Omni Flash will take gaming to the next level. Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Omni Flash, and I am your guide to Perfect World Mobile. Welcome to the Ultimate Assassin Guide. Today, I'm going to show you how to be a better assassin and be able to PVE like a champ and be able to PVE just like your brothers and sisters, the archer and the wizard. I don't talk too much about Blade Master because honestly, Blade Masters are outshined by all three classes at this moment in time. In the future, they might get a buff. Right now, Assassin is in the limelight and we will show you how to PVE in a better way so that people can stop laughing at your DPS. Also, we are going to show you how to PVP. Hopefully this video doesn't get too long because there's a lot to cover. And uh, first question that most people want to know is what do you want to be? Should you go Sage? Should you go Demon? I'm going to just go ahead and tell you, you need both. but. You need to be sage first because in order to progress in the game, you have to be able to fight the monsters. You have to do PvE things to get stronger so that you can PvP. So sage is how you fight dungeons, how you get stronger through dungeons. Okay, so you definitely need the sage path and then you also need the demon path because both paths are so specialized so specialized it's not like the other classes the demon side the demon side is so specialized into player versus player that all of those skills are not good for pve all right they're just not they're horrible so if you ever see an assassin in demon tell them to swap to sage and if they don't know what they're doing in sage they need to watch this video okay so what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the sage stats we're going to be talking about sage stats dagger increases your thrust damage which is your basic attack it's pretty important now if you're starting the game you probably can only put 10 points into each of these slots and that's fine you want to put 10 points or 15 points put all your points into slayer because slayer plus what it does is your your blood paint which is your aoe party buff will allow your whole party to do more damage versus enemies that's what slayer is slayer is pve damage boost and then you want to put the rest of it into dagger you can put a couple of points into quick strike it's i it's not that important if i have a ton of points maybe put some into quick quick strike <clears throat> topple i feel like topple sweep yeah yeah sweep is very important i recommend you putting uh 15 points into sweep into topple hamstring is all right it just increases the root time in pve situations that's not important at all if i could i would just put one point into it but i can't you need to put you need 20 points in a sage 2 in order to progress to sage 3 spell cut yeah you need to get spell cut when you can so that you can interrupt the bosses now uh you will do that in case your barbarian is stunned or feared you'll be able to interrupt the bosses in uh just in case your barbarians is somehow cc'd lethal dash lethal dash is one of your main damage dealers main damage dealers in pve situations whenever you have chi you're going to be leaping and dashing. You're going to be leaping and dashing. You're going to be freaking dashing all over the place. Also, you're going to be sweeping a lot. That's that's where all of your damage is. <clears throat> so lethal dash, max that out either 10 points or 15 points. Raving slash, raving slash is uh, is one of your normal ta uh, normal just skills. You, you do need to put some points into that. So we're going to put in just a little bit. And then I'm going to put points into sub C strike. Sub C strike is one of the best skills that assassins have. It is a three second invulnerability. That is so OP. And uh, it's just, it's, it does quite a bit of damage, especially if you invest into aqua blow. I am running out of skill points. All right. So 
you do want to try to uh, farm spirit so that you have more skill points but I am running out of skill points eventually I will put some more points into aqua blow the biggest reason why the assassins on your team may actually deal a ton less damage is because they are dead most of the time and as a, a wise man once said to me I wish I had a goblin quote unquote dead assassin so if you ever have a chance you probably want to get a goblin it is the superb PVE pet for assassin and it is also quite useful in PvP situations especially if you're running away it, it might allow you to survive for three seconds extra but one of the abilities for a goblin is that every minute or so if you almost die well if you die you still have one HP left and uh, you will be shielded for three seconds and in that three seconds hopefully you're able to go invisible and run away. So if you're watching a gameplay, I am using Leaping Dash every time that my Chi fills up to two bars. Leaping Dash will be the main damage dealer. So one reason why your assassin friends are not doing any damage is because they aren't using Leaping Dash. Instead, they are using Chi Burst or something. But Leaping Dash is a huge, huge damage, especially if you build your assassin my way. You do want to spam all your skills all the time. However, when, you, when the boss is about to use an AoE, which you know you cannot really dodge, then you want to leave that sub C strike available and that is why I have sub C strike over there in the left this way I have access to sub C strike I can use sub C strike as a survivability mechanic instead of just damage it does do quite a bit of damage however sub C strike gives you three seconds of invulnerability since you won't be using chi burst all that often <clears throat> right here my sub C strike was not up and I wasn't able to use sub C strike but you can use sub C strike and avoid that laser very easily you can also use other skills such as stalk as well as far strike plus as movement abilities you can jump like behind the boss in case there is an AOE in front of you yeah, just jump, jump across. Oh well, I I got corruption. All right, so this is this is one of the things where you uh, you fall behind on DPS. It's because if you get like corruption or something, you have to run away, and during that whole time, you won't actually be able to do much damage. All right, so the Hydra is enraged. We have only a couple seconds. Just have to spam those skills. There we go. As you can see, I am using every single skill at my disposal as well as leaping dash if you want to have damage that is near archers and wizards you're going to be using leaping dash a lot of times all right so we're here at the second boss and this is where your heaven to fall blood paint could be a pain to yourself as you actually have to Pay attention very closely like if one of these uh, vulpines let's say mango decides to spawn a new pet like right now and if your tank wasn't did not have aggro and uh, you hit it with one of your AOEs from 
Heavenfall Blood Paint, it w you're right next to it, and that could kill you. So the second boss of Moonfall is uh, quite dangerous for assassins, especially if you have Radiance. If you have Radiance, she can use her her fire circle. Zimba could start spinning at any moment, and uh, it's very difficult to run away from Zimba from point blank. And you just have to pray that your tank has the ability to hold aggro on all of these, all of these pets. All right, so one of your special abilities is uh, Shadow Walk. Shadow Walk makes you invisible, and you'll be able to use three assassination type skills that deals more damage for PvE situations such as right now you are going to be using quick strike which when you shadow walk it turns into lock maw and lock maw increases damage to mobs to monsters to bosses it does it doesn't increase damage to people the skill that you have that increases damage to other players is raving slash and when you shadow walk raving slash turns into decapitate but since you're sage and we're doing dungeons you're going to be every time you shadow walk be sure to do lock maw which is quick strike it turns into lock maw all right there is one thing if you start taking damage get out walk towards the healer uh, don't die. I know you're not doing damage while you're out, but allow your healer some time to heal you up. Allow some time for your food to heal you up. And now the man goes down, all you really have to worry about is Zimba because that spin. Our, if you were at that moment, I was feared. And there's nothing I could do. If Zimba started spinning towards me I was very lucky it spun towards the cleric <laughs> all right so top priority is to get rid of Zimba because at any second you're sitting right next to Zimba if he started spinning right now you're toast you really really have to be on your toes you've got to be on your toes and uh, be sure to position yourself away from the other bosses because the other bosses can kill you also. So you must, must position yourself away from AOEs. Even Mufasa can attack you. Even Mufasa Firestorm. You see this Firestorm? Mufasa's Firestorm can hurt you. When Mufasa has his Firestorm, his uh, little red fireballs going, you can't even attack him. I mean, you can throw knives at him, but that's about it. Yeah. I'm having a hard time telling if those little fireballs is from our tank or if it's from Mufasa. So, so I'm like standing back a little bit trying to figure out if it's, if it's from Mufasa or if it's coming from our tank. Because Mufasa's fireballs can really hurt you. Assassins have another cheat skill. It's called Tidal Mantra. I don't use it that much in PvE. Because if you use Tidal Mantra. You lose the damage from another leaping dash. Tidal Mantra is more for PvP. Than for PvE. It allows you to remove debuffs. Like slows attack debuffs defense debuffs it removes all debuffs now you're not able to use it if you're like perma stun if you're stunned you're not able to use mantra now here's an easter egg that i found to be really really cool is because the fire elder uses witchcraft and turns everyone into little bunny rabbits being the amazing assassin i am you can use sub c strike and not turn into a bunny while you are using sub c strike for the next three seconds you are in another dimension <laughs> and, and uh you avoid turning into a bunny rabbit so that's pretty cool that's really cool 
And during that whole time, you can continue to deal damage to the boss while everyone else is still a bunny rabbit running towards a carrot. So on some bosses, they, they're, it's actually pretty easy. So, so not all bosses are very dangerous to assassins. Like the Hydra isn't especially dangerous to assassins. The Fox Elders are not dangerous to assassins. Now you have the balls. And you can you can leap. You can leap to the other side. So you can use your leaping skills. You have a couple of leaping skills. And you can leap to the other side of the main boss. And the ball usually loses aggro on you and goes after someone else. Well, that pretty much covers the PvE aspects for Assassin. You have to stay on your toes. It's uh, it's like playing Dark Souls. <laughs> you can get one hit. Now, my friend just got a Hydra Wing, so that's really cool. So in summary, if you are a smart assassin, if you are an assassin that takes pride in yourself and you use your skills wisely so that you can continue to DPS, you use your sub-sea strikes, you use your escape skills, your leap skills, you can avoid AOE attacks. You have to predict where the bosses will attack. If you can do everything correctly, you might not die. And if you don't die, you'll be able to do decent DPS. You'll be able to DPS as well as those archers, as well as the wizards and blade masters. However, you will probably want a goblin just to make yourself a little bit tankier. Next up, we're going to do PvP. But before then, if you like this video, please like, subscribe, smash that notification bell, and comment below to be entered to win a $25 iTunes or Google Play gift card June 30th, 2020. And, uh, you know, if you have any friends, be sure to share this video with them as well. I like the fact that you have to work to be an assassin. Assassins are incredibly powerful in small-scale PvP and are very useful in Territory Wars. Also, they have a lot of speed boosts while they're invisible. They also get Ambush. If you're a Demon Assassin, after 8 seconds you deal 20% more damage when you're invisible. So that's pretty powerful. Your, your, your party buff, what you're going to do is you want your party buff to deal more viciousness so you definitely want to get viciousness to 10 or 15 behead will increase the amount of uh, healing debuff when you decapitate and one of your main skills will be decapitate because decapitate does uh, insane amount of damage towards other players and that's why I put points into behead that would prevent the enemy player from getting healed for the next 8 seconds. And within 8 seconds, they will probably be dead anyways. And it's, it's like, that's why this is so powerful. Assassins are so powerful because of this debuff. Because most clerics are so tanky because they can heal you faster they can heal themselves faster than you can kill them, right? Good clerics can heal themselves faster than you can kill them. But if you max behead, they can't heal themselves. I mean, it's going to be like 50% less healing and you will be able to out damage their heals. Another amazing improvement with the demon path is that you get swift step, which is the replacement for stomp. You teleport behind your enemy and you can decapitate them without going invisible. So you can decapitate them when you ambush them, which gives you 20% more damage on the first decapitate. Then leap behind them using swift step, decapitate them again. I mean, if their head is still kind of attached to their body, then what you can do is if you have chi, do your leaping dash. 
that will kill them. And then, I mean, it's just um, usually you can three three hit most players if they're super strong. You can use sub C strike to make yourself invincible for three seconds. And during those three seconds, your enemy is probably throwing AOEs, throwing all sorts of skills, and not hitting you. I mean, because they are so pissed that you've taken them down to 20% HP, they're going to be throwing everything at, at you while you are invincible. <laughs> So, I mean, this is this is incredible. I mean, for the next three seconds, you're not targeted. Then you can use Far Strike to dash your way out of there. And then Shadow Step and get out and go invisible. Repeat the same thing all over again. So anyways, I do like Downpour. It reduces your cooldown on Far Strike. And uh, that allows you to get away. So you want to get in, attack, kill somebody. And then you want to use Far Strike to get away. Goose Shuriken, increasing the slow effect. I, I don't know, 60% slow is enough. I feel like don't need to increase that too much. Elusive is good because it increases your movement speed. While Invincible, it's great for large maps such as Territory War and Guild League. Decapitate, you want to max. You want to max Decapitate because simply Decapitate is your main form of damage. You want to max Leaping Dash, uh, which is Fatal Dash. Right, you need to max Fatal Dash because that is your second main form of damage. Cutthroat is alright, not that important. Um, I don't use Mantra all that much. I mean, if you are lower BR, if you're lower BR, then you can use Mantra to boost the damage that enemies take. You can use Mantra, you can use the Mantra, which is the Muyu Seal, like on top of a point in Guild League. But yeah, Mantra is super good to get away if you are slowed uh, or, or CC'd in any way. You can use Mantra to get away in PvP and save your butt. So Chi is very important for assassins. So one way to lock down an assassin, suck away all their Chi and slow them. If you suck away their Chi, it, it, really, it really puts them at a disadvantage. It takes away one of their main forms of damage, which is Leaping Dash, as well as their main form of escape, which is the Mantra. All right, this M. Assassin reduces Swift Step's cooldown. I really like that. That is super good. Swift Step allows you to use your uh, Decapitate more often. You'll be able to use Double Decapitate. So definitely, that will be the next skill I recommend you upgrading to max. Earth Crack is interesting. Put at least one point into it so that you can stun enemy players with your knife throw. So let's get into some real life PvP. A lot of times you do want to make sure that you are invisible for eight seconds that first attack will possibly one-shot people you get that 20% damage buff if you are in fact invisible for more than eight seconds so get out of get out of yeah, just get out of combat for 8 seconds and then do your decapitate and, and people just blow up. It is, uh, it is pretty insane. If they don't blow up, use your leaping dash. Subsea strike on top of a point. It will hit everybody. You take absolutely no damage. And then, I mean, if it's on a tank or something, you can just, just use all your skills. Once again, if you go invisible, for 8 seconds you'll be able to deal a little bit more damage. 
on your first decapitate? Well, I mean, 20% is a lot, I guess. <laughs> Not a little bit more, a lot more damage. As an assassin, your job is to eliminate the squishy targets, prioritizing clerics because it is your specialty at reducing healing. And you will be able to destroy the enemy clerics because they can't heal themselves. That is just incredible. So now it's more important than ever to have keep an eye on where your clerics are and to jump on any assassin, throw some dust on them, throw some sand on them so that they can't go invisible. But yeah, normally you can go in and you can uh, use Mantra to run away. Mantra will make you invisible. So Zero went up to the sky. He was looking down, making sure that he could protect the healers. Yum yum. It took him a second to realize I was attacking him. He didn't see me for sure. And it's like, why am I dying? When he realized that he started focus firing on me, then you run away, you go invisible, and then you heal up, and you come back, and you and you uh, re continue doing what you do best. So if you're facing a much stronger enemy, you want to use lock mod to seal them. To prevent them from doing stuff that will allow your team to take them out and you will use decapitate to take out enemy players that are similar or slightly higher battle rating decapitate I still like using decapitate on higher battle rating enemies as well because it lowers their healing so if they have a pocket healer well first of all you should you should attack the healer first. Take out the healer first before you go after this, uh, the, the, the tankier enemies. So there you go. This is all about assassins. If you have any questions, feel free to ask below. Comment below. Let me know if there's anything else you want to know about assassins. They are an amazing class. It is slightly harder to PvE. You have to focus a lot. But in PvP, your burst damage is unparalleled. You just, unlike demon archers, which are sort of like a machine gun turret class, movable machine gun class, or a wizard, which is a huge rock catapulting class, the assassin goes invisible and destroys the enemy before they realize what's happening. And uh, that's balanced out with a much weaker PvE aspect. You have to be very good at PvE in order to match the other DPS classes in dungeons, especially higher Mirage dungeons. It's tough because almost everything, including mobs, will blow you up. You have to stand back and uh, make sure that the tank has aggro. You have to actually know how tanks get aggro. All right, so so it, it is it is it is a very educated class to PVE. Well, the PVP isn't that difficult. The T PVP is so easy and so strong, but the PVE side is going to keep you on your toes. Do you guys agree with me? Do you love the new Assassin class? I know I do. I, f I freaking love it in PvP. I really wish that I could class change to Archer whenever I do my dungeons. <laughs> you can sort of AFK. You can, you can sometimes AFK dungeons as an Archer, but not as an Assassin. I mean, especially if you don't want your team to think that they're carrying your butt because you just if you're if you're semi fk you're going to die all right so if you enjoy this video please like subscribe smash that notification bell comment below 
to be entered to win a $25 iTunes or Google Play gift card June 30th, 2020. And uh, be sure be sure to tell all your friends. Post, post this in your Discord. It's going to help them understand what an assassin is and uh, how to counter them. Or it's going to help them be able to do more damage and be useful in dungeon runs. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.